coming out to wake up the lost sheep of the house of Israel, right? Uh, I, if you could begin in Psalms 117. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 117, and verse 1. Oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise him, all ye people. For his mercy, merciful kindness is great toward us. And the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord. That's right. Praise ye the Lord, right. all ye people. Right. Because at, at the end of the story, at the, at, at the end of everything, every knee will bow down before the Most High God, Yahweh. That's right. Right. No matter who you worship, no matter what you believe, at the end of the story, every knee shall bow down before the Most High God, Yahweh. Right. And in the process of that, the children of Israel had to reclaim their position on the earth, right? As the head of the earth. That's we, right! Because we are the, 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 the salt of the earth, the, the light uh, of the earth, right? Bring, we bring out that knowledge and understanding to the world. We're the ones that stand up and plead the cause of the Most High God. No other nation does that, right? So no other nation will bring forth righteousness, right? So that's what must happen in these last days. That's right. And that's what you see before you as the men of the Lord are standing on the on the sidewalks in every city, in every state, all over the world. Right, preaching the 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 gospel to the children of Israel to bring back that order in the world. Right. So that's what your brothers are out here doing uh uh right. So so first off, uh we're going to go ahead and start right. Yo, bring it out. Breaking down the lies that these pastors and these churches all over the country are, are bringing forth, right? Because, you see, the, the, the story of Israel is that we are to, to, to be obedient, right, to the Most High God, loving and towards the Most High God through the following of, of His commandments. Bring it out! Right? And every time we fell from following His commandments, the Lord punished us. Right, so it, it just does not make sense that the Lord would make us go through all that and continuously punish us for breaking His commandments, and then just saying, "All right, the the commandments are you know just gone; they're done away with. You you no longer have to follow my perfect and holy law." Right? Give me Romans uh, uh, seven and twelve. Right, because a lot of people like to believe because of these pastors, because of uh, Christianity because of the lies perpetuated by the powers that be, our people now believe, right, blacks and Latinos now believe that the law of the Most High God is done away with, and we have lost our power, right? This is the book of Romans, chapter seven and verse 12. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh, for if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. Right, so living li living in the flesh is living in sin, basically. That's right. right! Those who live in the spirit walk after the law because we know that the law is spiritual. Right, uh, a verse... 14. Romans 7 and 14, right? But we know in, in Romans uh, uh, 7, right, Paul breaks it down very clearly that the law is what is spiritual, right? That also there is another law that works within us that we have to kill off, right? And that is the law of our flesh. That is the law of sin, right? That is what, what has been come to, to that is what, what has come to, to, to be done away with, right? right. Where, where to be free from the bondage of sin, right? Give me Psalms, Psalms 119 and 43, no, 44. Right, that is, that, that is what we, 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 we have been, uh, uh, 
come to, to be uh, free from that from the bondage of sin that has been perpetuated or has been consistently going on and existing within our people, right? That's how we're gonna get that perfect covenant later on, right? That's how our people will grow enough to the point where we will no longer have to teach uh, uh, each other, right? So go ahead and read that up. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 119 and verse 44. So shall I keep thy law continually forever and ever and I will walk at liberty, for I seek thy precepts. So y'all see that? So walking in liberty and, and freedom, right, is to keep the law of the Most High God and to seek his precepts. That's right. Right, that is walking in liberty. Walking in bondage is walking in sin, right? Every time Israel fell, Right, speaking in, in, now in a physical sense, every time Israel fell, right, break from uh, uh, breaking the commandments, we went into bondage. We went into bondage, okay? But past that, there's a spiritual bondage that causes our people to continuously fail time after time. And that's that, 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 that bondage to, to the law of sin that exists within our flesh, okay? And to break out of that, we need to follow the law. We need to fight for the law. Psalms uh, uh, 19 and 7. Right? right that, that, and that's what's going to transform. That's what's going to convert us. That's right. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 19 and verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure making wise the simple. Y'all see that? So the law of the Lord is perfect. Converting the soul. That's what converts your soul. That's what uh, 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 Christ and the apostles were talking about when they said, repent ye and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. That, that They were going basically into saying, follow the law. Keep the law. Right? We're not talking about the sacrificial law because we know that that the Messiah came, he died on the cross, and he became that sacrifice for us, right? That we may enter into grace. How you doing, sister? Oh, um, you and your children believe in the Lord? You mind coming to dialogue with us for a second? You mind coming over here to dialogue with us for a second? Y'all come on, don't be afraid. Because we out here for our people. That's right! We not out here to when we bring it out like this, go to Isaiah 58 more for me, all right? Read that for me, King. We're not out here to oppress our people any more than they've been oppressed in America. That's right. We are here to show our people that there's a way out of oppression. That's right. And so brothers and sisters see the men of the Lord on the streets crying aloud like the scriptures say. Go ahead, read. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 58, and verse 1. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sins. Right, so the scriptures say cry aloud. Come over here, sis, right in front. I want y'all to see the signs, right? The scripture says cry aloud and spare not. That's right. That's what we doing. We out here crying aloud because the Most High told us that, right? Come But just because we crying aloud, that doesn't mean we hate our people. Come yes, sir, brother. We don't teach hatred, we teach love. The love of our people and the redemption of our people to show our people the so-called blacks and latinos that they the number one man woman and child how you doing princess did you know you're a princess what's up prince you know you're a prince man what's your name what's your name brother bj what's your name sis what's your name adorn beautiful name beautiful names i want y'all to know something right go to um revelation uh one and one Y'all believe the Bible? I got it right on. Let me ask a question, young brother. What does Christ look like, you know? Yeah, it's like, it's like, you know, not the cross. I'm saying, what, is, what does Jesus look like? He got long hair. You see? And that ain't his fault. Because in this society, they not teaching our children right. That's why it's up to us. That's why, what happened to the village, right? Because they, they, they always say it takes a village to raise a child. And it, it's a village that must come back. And you know where that village starts with? The men of the Lord. That's right. That's it's right. our job to bring that village back. So I'm going to show you something, young boy. What was your name again? 
Sean, judge my mind and not my heart, brother. Go ahead. Uh, Revelation 1 and 1. Read. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. The revealing. Revelation means the revealing. So we're dealing with the revealing of Jesus Christ. We call him Yahweh in the ancient Paleo Hebrew. But we know that everybody knows him as Jesus Christ. Right? So we're going to say Jesus, right? So the revealing of Jesus Christ. Jump to verse 10. Right? This is verse 10. I was in the spirit of the Lord on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest, write in a book. It said he was in the, John the Revelator said he was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Today is the Lord's day. That's Today right. is the Sabbath day. Right. Friday sundown and Saturday sundown is the Lord's Sabbath. That stuff they teach you in the Christian church, you can't believe it. Because they got that from the same person that's oppressing them. They get their doctrine from the same people that was beating our backs in, in slavery. The same people that was cutting a baby out of our sister's stomach and stepping on it. Feeding our children the alligators as alligator bait. They took this Bible and twisted it. So we can't believe anything these Christian pastors that go to, the, to Esau Seminary School say. Because we know they compromised. Today is the Sabbath day. Today is the Lord's day, right? Now jump to verse 13. Verse 13, and in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one likened unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. One like the Son of Man, that's talking about Jesus. Y'all watch wrestling? Y'all like wrestling? Y'all ever seen the, the belts that the wrestlers wear? That belt right here? He, Jesus had something like that on. He was girded up. He had the girdle right here, like a, it was gold, like a belt. That's what he had on. Now, that's gonna tell us what he looked like. Read. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. His head and his hairs, you ever seen a sheep? You ever seen how, how the sheep hair look? BJ, you know what the sheep hair look like? What it look like? It looked like your hair, young brother. You see that? <laughs> feel your hair. Feel your hair. Feel your hair. I want you to feel your hair. And when you feel your hair, I want you to understand that that's beauty. That's, that's right. Come on. You, you got hair just like Christ got. Bring that out. That's beauty. Young sister, when you get older, you're going to set the beauty standards. You understand? Mommy set the beauty standards. All these white women out here, they paying millions of bucks to look like you. And you know why that's important? Finish this verse. I'm going to tell you why it's important. Go ahead, read. And his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. Now, brass is a derivative of brown, right? So, brass is brown. If you take anything and put it in the furnace, what that's going to do? It's going to burn it up. It's going to darken it. Burn, burn his brass. Christ was, Christ was a beautiful, dark brown brother with a, with a, with a, with a white beard, white in, white in color, wool in texture. Bring that out. And this is why that's important. Let me tell you why it's important. It's important because they take our babies her age, right? They put them in a room and they put a white doll and a black doll down and they say, which one is beautiful? And our babies point to the white doll and say the white doll is beautiful and the black doll is ugly. Come on. You know why they do that? Because all the images they see on TV, all the Disney princesses, everything they see on TV is, is white images of beauty. That's right. And everything they show about us on TV is trash. That's why imaging is important. Now we know when we see an image of Christ in his true depiction, we're not worshiping that image. We're simply saying, that is important for our children to see. That's right. Because it's important for our children to know, hey, the greatest man that ever walked the earth looked like me. That's right. Pull your hair again, BJ. 
Price had hair like that. So when somebody tries to say your hair is nappy, it don't matter. Price got hair like that. Nappy hair is beautiful. That's right. You got these girls on, these white girls on Instagram going to the tanning salon 17 hours a day and doing crazy stuff to their hair so they can look like they got natural hair. Bring that out. And you got our sisters killing themselves to look like these white girls when the white girls pay millions of dollars to look like them. Black woman, you set the beauty standard. That's right. You set the beauty standard, black and Hispanic woman. You're the beauty standard. Why you want to look like them? So these images are very important for us to understand so that our children can feel good about themselves. You gotta feel good about yourself when you wake up in the morning. That ain't nappy hair, that's beautiful hair. That's beautiful hair. Look how your sister hair is. That's beautiful hair. Sis, don't ever perm her hair, sis. Keep it away from that. Because again, our people set the beauty standard and our children need to understand their royalty. That's right! Go to, go to um, Deuteronomy 7 and 6 real quick, out of one. We the royalty. We the, we the number one man, woman, and child. The most I said up 12 mighty tribes. You know what tribe you come from, brother? Mm -mm. You from the tribe of Judah, man. His father's a so-called um, African-American, right? From the tribe of Judah, brother. Go ahead and read what you got, baby. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter seven and verse six. For thou art in holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. You see that? The Bible just said that you're above everybody else. And you are, you're a special person unto the Most High God. That's right. Above everybody else. See, as you get older, brother, you the future. You and your brother and your sister, y'all the future. And as y'all get older, if Christ ain't came back yet, you're going to see our people doing the same.